For 72 years now, representatives, senators, aides, and governors have shuttled through the silent sunshine of this gilded dome, seeing to the affairs of the state of Minnesota, setting the policies, passing the laws, collecting the taxes. Tonight, our story is about one of those people, tall, talkative, tenacious Rudy Perpich. feel good. I just, just love everything I'm doing. And I'm just, I've never been happier. The happiest days of my life. The state basketball tournament. The Perpich family watched the action. The governor waited to talk with the players and award the trophies. I started working in a, a railroad. I was 15 years old. Really 14 years and 11 months old. And I was working in 11 7 shift for the railroad. And uh, that was the story of my life, I guess. Last night, you and 22 from Silver Bay are about the best guys I've seen for a long time. You got another year. Yeah, I think a part of it is uh, making my father and mother so very proud. <laughs> Never in their wildest dream did they ever think that, you know, this time to become governor of the state of Minnesota. And I guess the same is true with me. Well, it's, uh, you can do more for people in, uh, in holding uh, office than you can in any other, uh, you know, in any other profession. Uh, you can actually uh, feel that there should something should be done, and you can go out and, and do them. Uh, I think you can get a message to the public that you can't get uh, in any other profession. And you just feel good being able to accomplish something. And then, of course, it's very exciting. Days are long here in the east wing of the Capitol. This one began at 6.30 a.m. and will end after midnight. One meeting after another. What's going it's on? It's a constant there? battle just to stay on schedule. Sometime, and I know you're you're very busy, but uh, they really want a chance to talk with you, and then somebody on your staff dealing with the whole water problem up in the in the valley. It's it's quite an issue. What I try to do as much as possible in one day, and uh, because at the end of two years, the people might tell me to go home, and then I'd have some real regrets. But if I'm going at full throttle and doing all the things that I really want to do. My basic problem with the Water Resources Board is that that's the last sort of local folks group, uh, yeah. you know, dealing with water. And there's a, a general hesitation on the, on the part of, of the area of the state where I'm from to turn any more of that over to the Department of Natural Resources. Yeah. And if I knew that I had six years, I'd very obviously slow down. But I don't know if I have the six years or not. And there's so many things that I want to do. So this is why I, I uh, work the long hours and uh, have a, uh, what some consider a, a tough schedule. Should take more than an hour, huh? No, uh, we won't take more than an hour. Bye, bye. Well, you want to put this one up now? And uh, wait, why don't we wait a little while? Okay. And tell Donna to come in. You want to help with this one? No, I can get it, Governor, as soon as I know what height. Oh, OK, come on. I'll show you. She said about, she figured about six inches should be it. About six inches above? Yeah, like that, I think. Okay. Maybe it's a little too high. Right about there. It's, how's that, uh, Cindy? That's not the reason I called you in. Yeah, I like, I like it at a level. Yeah, that's, that's about it, I think. What is that a picture of that? This is a, uh, a scene of the old days when they ravaged the environment. The Iron Range? Is that what it is? Yeah. You see, this, these are all, but they've just cut off. Uh, you know, one time they said that there'd <clears throat> never be an end to the trees, just like the iron ore. And uh, there'd miles and miles and miles of trees, and no one cared about uh, reforestation those days, see? Eh? Interest rates, as you know, have come down considerably during the last few months. But some of these private placement items 
We're put on our books ahead of time, like we have some hospitals here that are guaranteed in full by the United States government, some rail equipment paper. So even though interest rates are down at about 8%, you'll notice our average commitment here for the future is about 85 which will provide a very good yield to the funds. I would then like an approval of the corporate bonds and stocks purchase as listed in detail in the booklet up to now. So move. Move. Thank you. Support. Any discussion? All in favor simply saying aye. 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 The next item of business. I think that I have such a background in government to very few people. I, I've said this as Lieutenant Governor. There probably has never been a governor that was better prepared for the office than Rudy Pripich. For the simple reason that I was you know, on the school board for six years, and the Senate for eight years, and Lieutenant Governor for six years. And I really know state government. And I know it well. I know it's like from the bottom up. And as a result, uh, because we buy you know, many of the people that are in government with me, say on staff and what have you, don't have that background. <laughs> Forty-three years ago, I entered kindergarten in a small school on Minnesota's Iron Range. As I entered class that day, my father was unemployed and I spoke no English. And yet today, I have taken the oath of office as the 34th governor of Minnesota. I feel the uh, governor's first responsibility really is to open up government. I think government become more responsive to the people. Secondly, you know, there's 30,000 some employees in state government. And by keeping government open, uh, you can catch things. I mean, no individual can keep tabs on everything that's going on. But if you open up the process completely, the departments and everything, if everything is open, meetings are open, the whole process is open. And then the press and the people, uh, you get much better feedback. Oh, great, great, good. How are you? Okay, did you have a good day today? How's it going? How you dairy doing? farmers, distraught over the pending drought and the decline in dairy prices, brought their story to the governor's Hi. office. Hi, hi, I am one of the dairy farmers from Morrison County, and probably uh, if we weren't tied down there to our milk cows, you know, probably 10, 12 hours a day and seven days a week. We've probably been down here a lot of times already to try and do something about our dairy problems. Mm -hmm. Maybe but just a little uh, tense for a few minutes, and then once the dialogue starts, I, I relax, and by the time I leave there, I feel like I'm leaving some friends. Support. Shouldn't we have a marketing order for the state of Minnesota then also, so we could regulate milk coming in and flooding our market? I think of many, uh, many false expectations, that's for sure. You really don't know until you start talking. What is what you know? What can you do? They want us to appear in Washington before a committee. If they think it'll help, we'll do it. You know, there isn't that much that you can. Uh, in some of those cases, there's some. You know, there's much you can do, and you just say so. You know, I, I don't think that they expect government to answer all their, uh, uh, you know, all the problem, all the uh, problems that we have. But they do feel that uh, uh, government should be responsive to them. In other words, I think when they see that you're throwing away dollars, that's very upsetting to them. You know, I think people are willing to, to pay, the, uh, pay the price, you know, if they know that they're getting something for their dollar. But if they think that we're squandering their money and we're not responding to their needs, that's when they're losing faith. Right, this one seemed like it was a good move. <laughs> it was a good move. There, right, it was. It was excellent. Well, I'm going to call a press conference. What do you mean? You're going to call the press in here. The reserves, President of the Judge, Lake Superior, Reserve Armed Army Public agree to forego any rights which they may have to seek review in the United States Supreme Court of the pending decision of the Minnesota Supreme Court in the event the ruling should be unfavorable to reserve. Now, what do you think of that, Nicholas? You know, I got the letter back today. It was successful. You know, here it is. They're willing to forego any rights which they may have to seek review in the United States Supreme Court of the pending decision of the Minnesota Supreme Court, huh? Well, that's... If I stayed home, would that happen? No. We got that letter from uh, Armed Corps Reserve in Republic, all three signed. 
We commend your desire to ex expedite the resolution of the reserve mining controversy in your statement that you will support whatever decision is reached by the Minnesota Supreme Court. A special delivery letter had just arrived, a reply to months of planning, consultation, and several secret shuttles by the governor. Subject, the reserve mining controversy. An emergency meeting was called. The governor excited. The staff a bit more cautious. May I uh, just make a comment about uh, what they don't say in this letter? And that is, uh, it says here, we commend your desire to expedite the resolution of reserve mining controversy in your statement that you will support whatever decision is reached by the Supreme Court. They don't say that they'll support that decision. They'll just say they won't appeal it. And they still haven't made a commitment that if the decision is 20, that they will support that and mm -hmm. go to 20. I felt when, I, when we first got the letter, well, this is as far as it goes now. In other words, release the letter and that's it. So I really don't have to check back and make sure that, you know, in other words, you're not cutting any, any communications off. But if there, if there is a possibility that this could happen, I think all we should do at this point, because I'm not going back and asking them, you know, I'm going to release the letter or what have you. And I don't even know if they've released the letter. Don't know. If we could just say, uh, because I, you know, I'm very happy about what happened, just one line until we pursue what you're talking about. In other words, reserve appeals to go to 20, and we appeal that if we lose the case and it's seven, we give them the permits and stop hassling one another. So that we're basically talking about trying to get an agreement that stops the dumping and that gets the workers' jobs. So the court is objective and we will go by what it okay. So therefore, I don't think we should call a loose conference and, and make this thing uh, so visible. Let me have, have one thing clear then with all of us, and we're going to have to be very disciplined about this. There are no exceptions. Beyond what Bob says, it's no comment yeah. for the time being, okay? Everybody agree with that? All I'm going to say is that we received a letter from Reserve Armco and Republic. Uh, part of what they said was they will not appeal, and they asked the state for nothing. Yes, for no commitment from the state. I'm going to work. All right. I was at work. Make yourself a hero. Raj, God bless. Governor, the Willow River people are in there. Okay. Just before we go, these are some, we've received about 100 letters on this subject. hadn't been home to Hibbing in over three weeks. So, off we went. Well, hello. Ah, good to see yeah, you. Yeah. Hi, 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 hi. How are you? Great, how you been? Good, fine. Jeez, I haven't seen you for a long you know, time. I was just thinking about you the other day, too. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I see him all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, on TV. On TV, on don't they? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. How you been? Good, 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 good teeth. Yeah, good, good. Oh, no, good it's, it's been a long time. Yeah. Who, who, who are you going to then? <laughs> These people here are um, graduate. We graduated together. We did. Yeah. <laughs> A few years back. <laughs> but I can tell them how long ago. You know, we got the uh, money for that uh, airport, the terminal. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. so that's going to be... Oh, this has changed. Yeah. Well, that's Probably. the business district over there. Yeah, right. Over there, you read me 10 yards? Yeah. Old docks, there's yeah. your Victor's Brewery, and those other uh, breweries that were here. There was breweries in town? Oh, yeah, they had three or four of them. Isn't that something? You know, I just think of all the hundreds of millions of dollars that came out of here, and what happened to us? We said, dump our garbage right over there. We picked it up twice a year. Didn't have any, uh, no indoor facilities. Uh, the, the streets uh, weren't paved. There wasn't any sidewalk in front of the house. And, uh, you know, what do we have to show for it? Look at it. It took over a billion and a half years to form. And in one person's lifetime, you know, approximately 70 years, we mined out all the natural iron ore in, the, uh, in uh, Minnesota. And then you can see the, uh, there's a couple of trucks down there. You know, they look very, very small from here, but those are big trucks. You want to address? Oh, oh, address. Oh, the address. The problem is April 30th, right? Right. And then, Rudy, you're going to go down to? Roberts. 
<laughs> no, there, we don't have any inhibiting, you know? No. Rudy Hardis is a uh, uh, tux uh, last time. He, what, what, uh, they gave you one shoe, one size, the other shoe. One was size 11 and one was size 12, and there was nothing you could And do. then one squeaked. Right there, it was squeaking. We had to put oil on it. That's right. It's our best leaders. <laughs> How you like that, fellas? Right on. There you go. Oh, that's a hot fire. I guess I don't disagree with, you know, whether uh, the Department of Corrections or the governor has a right to close it or not to close it. But I think the important thing right now is maybe just uh, uh, let the past uh, be and, uh, you know, let's talk about it from this uh, minute on. I think maybe Sunday morning, or maybe even Monday morning, I don't know which, we'll take a look at that schedule, probably to Judy here in a little while. I would like to drop in there. What we be doing? I went to Willow River to uh, uh, check personally on uh, should that facility be uh, closed or uh, continue to operate. Uh, the recommendation was made uh, to the uh, legislature based on uh, recommendations uh, from the uh, Department of Corrections. Uh, I then had a delegation uh, to, uh, from the area and legislators from that area that came to my office and uh, had some questions. And of course, uh, I felt that if you see it firsthand, you have to commit yourself and then you're in a much better position to convince other people. See, that was the whole thing when we went into this thing. It was a shared thing between the com combined area, because alone, our area, we're a depressed area. There's no way in the world that we can afford to go out and pay the rent of a building and, and offer the courses. This complex flex costs us 5100 here. Okay, so it's 51 here, and then how much is it over there, 84? Yeah. 88. 84. It's about 14,000 then. Willow River is a minimum security correctional camp Hi. operated by the state. Inmates attend vocational training classes at the Sandstone Vocational Education Center, jointly operated by the Department of Corrections and the Pine County School System. Here, students learn welding, machining, auto mechanics, and truck driving. If the state closes the Willow River camp and moves the inmates to another institution, then the school system could lose the entire vocational education program. It's a small and somewhat costly program, but it's been very successful. How long have you been in the program? Uh, about five months. Five months? You're learning something? Uh, it's a good program? Yeah, I like it. How do they treat you I'm guys going, here? I'm uh, school when I get out of here. Oh, Auto good. Mechanics. Where? Auto mechanics. Auto mechanics? No, no. You're learning? Yeah. You ready to go to Tech Night Point? Yeah, that's huh? where I'm going to try to get a job up there. Oh, great. How long have you seen for? Uh, four and a half months. Four and a half. Oh, good. Spying a point of interest, the Gov took a little side excursion, yeah. arm in arm with the Commissioner of Corrections. Just See, Commissioner, I want to show you something for a minute. Come, come here, come here. Just, just me and you. Want to show you. <laughs> you remember that uh, program we had on, uh, on uh, taking down old dilapidated buildings? Oh, Rudy's been hollering two years. Look at that. over there? Yeah, look at that. We saw it. We saw it. We saw it. You tell me, all the state buildings are taken care of. No, we don't have any there. <laughs> oh, that, look at that. Oh, that's how terrible it's unbelievable, isn't it? You have to admit, though, Governor, it's not costing as much money. <laughs> is that what? It's not costing as much money. <laughs> like, even the power line is cut off, I noticed. I don't, I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't think they have anything in there, do they? No, no, it's just, just, just a piece of junk. Yeah. I think it'd be, it's uh... Rat infested and everything. Now you've got some, uh, historical value. We're, we're gonna have a historical society come up here and, uh... Best commissioner in state government, only one demerit. Mm. There you are. <laughs> I know what that is over there, too. Oh, you see that? That's why I have to go to all these places. People ask me, why do I leave? Huh? You see that? One of the uh, questions that were raised, or one of the uh, reasons supposedly for not closing it was that the uh, people, that means 39 people would lose their jobs. Trust me. Well, uh, now we find out that 39 people aren't going to lose their jobs because we have a major state facility seven miles from uh, Willow River. And no one bothered to go up to Moose Lake and explain to them the possibility of phasing out Willow River and that the maintenance people will have an opportunity to go to work at uh, Moose Lake. After a short discussion with the hospital director, the governor took an unscheduled tour of one of the hospital wards. Ah. Do they medicate them pretty strongly, or...? No, they're not under any medications at all. We have to give them things to assist in the bowel movement. They must have been here for a long, long time, I suppose, huh? Oh, this unit, sure. well, 
I think this house was only had in ours for like five years. So I see. But they've been in some institution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We really enjoy having new people come in here. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. And everything's nice and clean, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. You sure what you think? Are you looking? You're talking to the right guy, if it is. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hi. Thank you. Oh, is that John the Fox yeah. Yeah. Yes. You did a nice job. Once again, I've had the opportunity to tour the Moose Lake uh, facility, and I want to commend the administration and staff for their excellent work. Because of your compassion and professionalism, the Moose Lake uh, Hospital stands out as one of the best in the uh, system in Minnesota. There's no doubt that this facility will be serving Minnesotans for many years to come. You're all doing a great job, and I was very, very impressed with what I saw today on my tour. Keep up the good work. Well, because you know what I was really saying is that uh, generally speaking, the uh, the uh, people seem to be really rebelling against the uh, legislature's not doing anything and uh, we're not really in tune with the yeah. communicating with them. And here, you're really demonstrating something very unique. Yeah. You're one person in this echelon of people who have authority that is really doing yeah. a tremendous job of communicating. Yeah. Seven a.m. on a soggy Saturday morning, the governor meets with still another division of state government. The commissioner of highways leads a tour on visual blight, highway billboards. Non-conforming sign is one which is in an area which is not zoned for commercial or industrial purposes. It's uh, agriculture, residential, interchanges, uh, other uh, scenic areas, rest areas. Could you do that for me? You get me the, uh, the names of those that are non-conforming, and if you can put them in categories, like Quaker State and all of them, and I'll get letters out to them. Okay. I'll get somebody in my office to start doing it. Sure. And uh, we'll see what kind of response we get. In 30 days, we know we'll follow through again or something. Okay. I bet you they would do it. We passed laws, yeah, and uh, somebody's screwing off. Nice. Just that simple. I, sure, I, sh I shouldn't be out there doing it, right? You know, Whoever's getting paid to do that should have done that years ago. If I call you once, I call you twice, it's not done. Well, what the hell, I'm not going to call you 1 o'clock anymore. For some reason, it's not being done. I'll call you 12 o'clock at night. If I get you out of bed, you say, hey, hell, I don't want this guy to get me out of bed at 12 o'clock. I better get it done. But I'm not going to call him the first time at 12 o'clock at night. No, I'll call him during the, during the regular hours, someplace during what you uh, consider regular hours. It's really not unpredictable. What are you thinking about? Uh, you know, what are your dreams for the future? You know, you... Be the best governor uh, of this state, and hopefully maybe the best governor any state's ever had, and that's it. You know, I have, uh, this is it for me, you know, as far as politics go. Then it's back to dentistry or back to something. Back to northern Minnesota for sure. It's too early, of course, to measure the success of the Perpich administration. Apparently his style, at least for now, does appeal to the public. There are legislative rumblings, however, expressing concern that the administration is too open, too undisciplined, that one man can't maintain the blistering pace that's been established, not even the Iron Ranger himself, that soon the one-man show is going to have to call on the supporting members of his cast. I'm Dave Moore.